And g'day there, my name is Aussie Stone, country Victorian gamer, Star Wars Armada, Star Wars Legion, etc. Today I am starting part two of my Star Wars Legion Commandos, painting the three aliens that came with my Garfi's Games Commandos. First up will be this model right here. And as you can see, I've already done all of the uniform, similar to my previous Commandos. And for the face, I will be doing this Numidian in just a shaded green. On the other side of the scale is my Duros, which I will be using a flat green color called Warplock Green on his face, as well as using some Null Oil to do some shading around his scars. The last model is this Bothan right here, which I will be using a plethora of various shades of brown to color all the fur. Starting off with this leather brown for uh, the likes of the mane, oak brown and beige brown for the likes of the hairs and for some of the shading effects. I'll also be using some other browns out the back here, just for the hands, etc. And then also some brown wash. But first, the Numidian. The Numidian, I'm going to, I've chosen to use just this green shade. I think it's a Bellaton green shade, rather than a flat color because I like the look of just that, having that white behind it. It's a, a rather light color that will come through. And as you can see from that painting that I'm doing right now of some of the tentacles, it's automatically getting into all the shading area. And it's, it's a nice lightish color rather than going for a flat color. Now, obviously, while it dries, it will in some way soak into the paint of the white undercoat and stain it. But then every subsequent layer of that same green that I'm putting onto him is actually going to create more contrast of the colors more shading in it, different areas, like for the face, as well as for some of the tent, the tendrils from his head. The other thing that I was going to mention is that in many ways, I can only do this if I spray painted it white or a very light color. Most other colors like any type of grays or browns or even the khaki colors that I use for some of it, I wouldn't get this good contrast between the green shades that I am building up on this model's flesh. So I'm quite happy with how I'm developing the colors on this. I do need to do like a bit of blotting in areas because of the fact that the actual models tendrils are all over the place and it's, it's quite hard to actually look at it in different areas. At this point here, you can see that I'm pretty much finished my first coat and I shall endeavor to leave it dry for a bit and then put a second coat on. You can see how the shading is working between all the individual tendrils from uh, the darker or the recesses holding a lot more of the wash as well as the hair really standing out being 
not white, but also not a really vibrant green color. If I wanted to, while it's still wet, I could potentially put some more of that wash onto the facial area to darken it even more. Or even potentially put a different type of wash to show a bit more of the shade. It really depends on how, how much shade you want on it to build up those layers of wash on the model itself. So while we leave the Namidian to dry, we're going to move across to the Duras using this Warplock, uh, Warboss Green to do his face and just a small section of flesh that is exposed on his gloves as well. So just using a very small pointant brush to do the inside of the gloves. Don't have to do too much here, but it's always appropriate where it flesh is flesh to do the color that the flesh is going to be in. In this case the green. The other hand is a little bit more tricky because of the way he's holding the uh, proton charge and also the directionality of the face rather than being straight looking straight ahead the model's head is actually looking quite down down towards where those charges are. So I'm gonna to have to shift this model ever so slightly and hold it on an angle while I paint him. Obviously, if I use a darker undercoat, like a gray, like I have with some of the other models, the green that I paint over it, or any light colour that I paint over it, has the potential to change, in some ways, the drying process of the paint. The, if it's a dark undercoat, the actual top coat sometimes, if done thinly enough, will become a lot light, a lot darker. In this case, doing the white it should brighten up ever so slightly but then using that null oil on some of the scarring that this duros has over his right eye will actually bring it back down a bit more With all Duros's, I'm not bothering to do the eyeballs because it's a solid shade of red, or um, I believe some of them are a like a, a, a dark grey, dark blue coloration. Uh, myself, I am going to use the idea of the red. Once it gets through, that I can actually do all the face, all the head, all the scarring in that initial color of green anyway. With the idea of doing some null oil into the cracks, I'm going to firstly do some red coloration just some very light watered down Memphis red and Scarlet red combine. Just to do some of the eye area as well as some like exposed bleeding areas on the skin. Just watering it down and then ever so lightly touching it in the areas around his eye. Now that the facial area is dry, we're just going to use some more thicker of the actual Memphis Red to do the actual eyeballs. So taking great care on a very sharp and thin brush to just do the eye areas. We do know that with the Doros, 
it is going to be the case that I'm going to have to go and redo the likes of the around the rim of the eye with the Warboss Green simply because it is very hard to, with the angle of the model facing down to get a good clean nice sharp line around the eyeball of the with the red so that's now the Numidian and also the Duros done or at least waiting to be dried now to get on to the Bothan I'm going to start off firstly with this filthy brown to do the front nasal nasal area or jawline area of him her I'm not really sure what gender the bothan is uh, it is a quite a flowy model as you can see from the mane of the hair coming down in front of the model as well as behind the model there is some bands headbands within the hair so it may be either but either way uh, so this filthy brown will go on to the likes of the very much the short hair area namely the snout and the hands and also the inner ear I'm going to then, after painting the hands, etc., start building up some of the other colour within the model itself. Now that the face is done, we'll just work on doing some of the linking parts for the hair using this monster brown around the edges of the likes of the mane or the, I guess you could call it the fringe area, as well as around the edges of the ears. Trying not to get too much paint on the brush as this can be, I guess, very very delicate. And because there is that flowing scarf throughout the hairline as well, I don't want to get too much of that brown onto it either. So just working, working my way along the edges just a little bit at a time, blending as best as possible, moving the model around. And as you can see, I've got a bit of blue tack on the bottom of the model and uh, using a old GW paintbrush, a paint pot to hold it a bit more steadier than just using my direct hands on the base. At this point, we're just sort of doing that beige brown around the cuffs of the sleeve, as the model does appear to have very much hair, fair, fur growing out there. We also want to make sure that as much of that hair that is going underneath the likes of the coat and then flowing out from underneath the hands or underneath the areas are covered in this beige brown look. At this point we could leave it like so but instead I'm going to use some of this orc oak brown which is a darker brown color just to do some highlights i'm going to do a highlight around of this color around his eyes and also around his nostril area 
this will give much more definition of those areas. I also plan to use the same coloration of oak brown around the edges of his ear. Just to give it a point of difference that this is not part of his or the model's mane. Once I have completed doing the mane and making sure that all the beige brown is covered underneath, etc., I'm then going to use a little bit of this brown ink to go across the hair or the mane to help give that three dimensional look that it's no longer just a plain straight coloration. And in many ways, it will actually improve the look of the model by having it look as though some of the mane is dark, some of the mane is light, some of the mane is sort of in between. And it gives more of the depth perception of the model which is something really nice that I like to do on most of my models. Yeah. And that's nice close up of the actual wash on the hair. At this point, I can almost say that I'm pretty much finished doing all of them. I do need to do a little bit more on this model. Uh, the headband for one still needs to be done. And there's also a com link on the side, which I'm just about to paint shortly in a metal tone. So one thing that I didn't notice when I initially painted the face was that there was actually a microphone that leads up to the likes of the uh, com link on the ear. So just, I'll need to do that quite carefully. But also I need still to do a little bit of coloration for the eye. And I thought, I don't want to do too much in the heavy colors. So just a little bit of black in the edges of the eyes will help give it much more like recessed eye look or shadow look. And black is pretty good, I think, for an eye color for this character anyway. And there you have it. All three of my aliens have been now completed. I still need to do a bit of varnishing and then the bases. And here is my completed painted models of my Star Wars Rebel Urban Scheme Commandos by Garfi's Games. I hope you have enjoyed this video. My next video won't be on for a little while as I will need to save some money. But either way, from Aussie Stern, I like to say thank you. Please like, please subscribe, or leave a comment. And for now, I will see you on the table next time. Bye for now.